Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and for today I want to make a guide video that everyone's seen no doubt once or twice in their League of Legends careers, 5 Reasons Why You're Hard Stuck. I know this isn't the most original League video, but I wanted to make one since I've coached quite a bit during my time playing the game, and while I do agree with a lot of advice given out in various information outlets like Summoner School and other channels, I'd like to believe I also know a thing or two that may or may not be common knowledge among most of the community. Season 11 is likely going to be a really big shift for a lot of players, especially those in lower ranks like Bronze, Silver, and Gold, because it's not really until Diamond Plus where players become more adaptive to change just on a natural level. So I'm sure there's going to be a large number of players looking for help on how to improve their climb with all the new items and the new changes. By the way, if you're wondering what to do to prepare for Season 11 Ranked, I have a video on that as well that you should check out after this one. The tips for this video will mostly apply to ranks Platinum and Lower, but it's in every player's best interest to take them to heart regardless of what elo they are, because whether you're an experienced veteran or someone starting fresh, basics and fundamentals will always be your greatest weapon. So at the end of the video, if you found it insightful, a rating would be much appreciated, but for now, let's just get right into it. First point I want to make is something I believe plagues a lot of hardstuck players, and that's the old every game I do nothing wrong, but we still lose because of bad teammates. Let me just throw this out for the sake of posterity. Some games are unwinnable, that's just how it is. I am a firm believer of the 30-30-40 rule. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the 30-30-40 rule is a premise that there are 30% of your games that are GG, forfeit 15s, as in no matter how hard you try, you're just going to lose the game. Conversely, there are also 30% of your games that are guaranteed wins. You probably had a bunch of games where you went 0-9 and, and you still won. So I bet everyone who complains that they always win lane but lose because of bad teammates, you probably had just as many games where you fed like the Red Cross in Africa and still won. Anyway, the last 40% is where you come in. That's often why you almost never see players with less than a 30% win rate or players with more than a 70% win rate. Most games come down to how well you can play in terms of your individual contribution, which is a lot more impactful than you might think. The main thing that separates high level players from low level is not how little mistakes they make, because there are misplays, throws, and feeding in every elo, even challenger. The real issue stems from your mentality in that you shouldn't just be thinking about the mistakes you're not making, but the things you're not doing correct. You could die zero times every game, but effectively be useless in terms of your contribution and pressure. By not taking initiative, whatever that entails, you may not be putting yourself at a disadvantage, but you're also not stopping them from gaining their own advantage from their actions. For instance, let's say you're a support main who is inconveniently cursed with always having a terrible ADC. Supports literally are the carry for the first 10 to 15 minutes of the game. There's more to being a support than just warding rushes and starting fights in the bot lane. One of the worst things you can do as a support is never leave lane. It's essential that you don't abandon your ADC to a 2v1 and lose control of bot lane, but you also shouldn't be needlessly wasting time and perhaps consider making a quick roam to the mid or top lane or even the jungle to alleviate pressure or assist in a kill. Drawing up another example in the top lane, something I think many top mains have an issue with being a top main myself is that they do absolutely nothing besides push lane, especially if the enemy top laner is playing very passive. If there is a stalemate in the top lane and you don't see any easy way you can engage for a kill or safely take out tower plates, then you should honestly leave lane and start doing something else. This applies to every role, not just top. Sometimes the enemy team doesn't want to interact with you and they'll patiently wait for you to push the wave under their tower. Diving may not always be a good idea, so you should start looking for other ways to build your lead because you're certainly not building one by sitting in lane doing nothing. In order to climb, you have to be doing more than the average player in your elo, be it bronze, silver, gold, platinum, or diamond. The ones who climb are the ones who don't wait for things to happen, but rather they make them happen. Leading me to my next point, squeeze out every bit of mileage with every advantage you get. How hard you can push that lead, no matter how much your ego tries to make you believe, you do not win games based on how big your KDA is, you win games if the enemy nexus explodes. In order to do that, your team needs to have an advantage over the enemy team, and the most conventional way to do that is to build a gold lead through gaining advantage. So let me give you a quick analogy. Let's say there are two people both with 100 gold, and they decide to invest that gold. At the end of the investment, one person comes back with 150, while the other with 200. The latter, of course, received a better return. Maybe they invested their time better, or maybe they used their money smarter than the guy with 150. Either way, it's the same basic principle in League of Legends. Now, scoring kills on the enemy team is definitely a good way to pick up an early lead. Let's say you get a solo kill on your lane opponent in the mid lane. Good work, you have 300 gold, now to figure out how to invest it to get even more gold. Whether that's by getting more kills, getting more CS, more objectives, whatnot, which path to take is always not black and white. Sometimes you can crash the wave under tower so they lose experience and CS, sometimes you should invade the enemy jungle to steal camps or even start roaming to kill other players, and or help with objectives. 
Perhaps later in the game after acing the enemy team, you should take Inhibitor instead of Baron or vice versa. The worst thing you can do with a lead is to stay in your lane. Remember that every death the champion suffers reduces their gold value, so if you're 6-0 and the opponent is 0-6, it is no longer worth burning resources like ultimates, summoner spells, or manpower because they're probably worth less than a cannon minion. This is when you go and look for other things to do like I mentioned above. Another thing to consider is that this also applies to preventing enemy team advantage. Let's say you're the top laner and your teammate teleports bot, but you took Ignite. Obviously your AD carry and support are not going to be happy about it, but you can still do something on your end to make sure your team doesn't fall too far behind. So while the enemy team is 5 man ganking bot, you could perhaps take first tower up top and even snag the rift herald, things like that. It's not always about what you do wrong, but it's about what you don't do right. Sure, you didn't lose lane, but you let the enemy top laner help their team get a massive advantage in the bot lane while you AFK'd in lane doing absolutely nothing to stop them. Individually, you need to understand how to compound your lead. I can't really break down every method in this video, otherwise we'll be here for like an hour, so maybe in the future I might make a video specifically on this point, but one helpful way you can practice is to learn how to adapt your build. One thing you should try avoiding at all costs when playing League is to autopilot. I get it, some games are super easy wins so you can cruise control your way through, not to mention, for a lot of players, even a single game can be very exhausting to play. Most people, they think of autopilot as not really paying attention to the map or mindlessly pushing lanes a little too far and getting collapsed on. But another aspect to autopilot that I think punishes players a lot more is building the exact same items over and over and over again. Every champion has a core build to make best use of their abilities. Sometimes it's uncompromising to the point where you have to build those items, at least that was what happened before. But the way the new mythic and legendary items were designed was to accommodate for different situations rather than one being the superior choice to build first every single time, such as Infinity Edge or Black Cleaver. If we take a look at marksman mythic items like Immortal Shield Bow, Kraken Slayer, Gale Force, and in some cases Eclipse, each one is a perfectly viable first build option on most AD carries. The first give attack damage, attack speed, and crit chance, while Eclipse gives attack damage, armor penetration, and lifesteal. But each item is built for specific situations. There are some champions that benefit more from one mythic item than others, such as Samira with Immortal Shield Bow. But even those champions can make use of the other three if and when they see fit. My point being, you can't and shouldn't always build the same items every game. This also extends to legendary items, depending on the game state. If you're ahead, if you're behind, if your team has a ton of damage but is very squishy, if the enemy team has a lot of front-loaded burst or maybe a lot of poke, you need to adapt your build to the items necessary to give you the best advantage possible. For example, I know a lot of players want to pick up Kraken Slayer on Vayne to augment her true damage, but if the enemy team has a LeBlanc, Cossix, and no real beefy tank, you don't get as much mileage out of building Kraken Slayer even if you're ahead because all the damage in the world does not matter if you get one-shotted, and you can't make up for that with superior outplay, I don't care who you are. Legendary items as well, if the enemy team has a lot of healing and regeneration, consider picking up an early Morello Namencon or the Kempunk Chainsaw, if there's a lot of hard engage on the enemy team, then Sterex Gage or Maul Malmortius to survive the initial burst and then you can turn the fight around. I think the most egregious example is arguably Boots. AD carries, they tend to autopilot for Berserker's Greaves when in certain cases they should build Tabbies, or uh, whatever they're called, play to steel caps. Supports tend to build Moby Boots, but many of them never leave lane, making it a completely useless purchase. Some might argue that this only matters if you're behind, but I think it matters just as much when you're ahead. If you're a 10-0 Vladimir and you feel very confident in yourself to one-shot everybody, you might go for Deathcap, which is a good option, but there might be better options. Perhaps if the enemy team is loaded with physical damage, Sonya's Hourglass is the more effective choice. Sure, you may not have as much oomph in your abilities as opposed to building Deathcap, but you become virtually invincible, which means you can survive a lot longer, which means you can do more damage in the long run. Remember, it's not just about getting a lead, it's how well you can push that lead. A lot of pointlessly lost games are a result from players just building inappropriately every game without thinking about which one is most valuable for what situation. This applies to every role, I'm not necessarily pointing out fingers, top, jungle, mid, AD carry, and support all have options to handle contingencies, but I guess people refuse to change their build either because they don't know any better, or because for some reason building defense is considered cowardly and everyone should go full damage and get one-shotted. Now I don't mean to get super nerdy with all this terminology, but since I brought up the analogy of investing your advantage in the right places, let's talk about the opposite, learning what you can afford to lose. This isn't a very heavily discussed topic because I feel like players don't think it's that important, but it very much is. Chances are you've ran into a situation where you got collapsed in a 3v1, but all three enemy champions blew their summoner spells, ultimates, and you were even able to maybe take one down with you. In that scenario, you would possibly type worth in all chat, right? 
While funny, that's actually something you should actively try to master. Opportunity cost is seldom thought about, but it's just as important as pressing an advantage. Sometimes in order to take two steps forward, you have to take one step back. Or uh, the old adage, you have to spend money to make money. Common situations would be things like trading the first dragon to get first tower and five plates, or giving away Rift Herald to score a double kill bot lane for turret. Do you stay top lane to shove the wave and get tower plates while the enemy lane teleport gang spot, or do you follow them to protect your own teammates? In more fringe cases, things like intentionally forfeiting Baron in order to secure a more permanent objective like Infernal or Ocean Soul can be the very decision that wins or loses the game. In lower elo, players lose a lot of valuable time and resources every game by hesitating to make a decision because they are afraid of losing something else, which ironically leads them to lose even more in the long run because they're spending so much precious time failing to reach a conclusion on what they should be doing. Obviously, while you're doing something, the enemy team will be doing something else, provided they're alive, of course. If you're the jungler and you gank bot, the enemy jungler might try to steal your camps up in the top lane. That's just a sacrifice you'll have to make. Good players know how to make split-second decisions on what they can afford to sacrifice in order to get a bigger advantage in the long road. A bit of a tangent, but I think this is why split pushing is so much more effective in low elo, because most players have absolutely no idea how to counter split pushing since they don't understand opportunity costs that well. Do you send a teammate or two to stop the split pusher and risk losing a key objective like Baron or Elder Drake in order to protect like an inhibitor? Or do you willingly forfeit a tower or inhibitor in the hopes that you can use those buffs to mount an all-out push to end the game? Very few players below Diamond know how to make those macro decisions, especially in high pressure situations, and instead will spend a lot of time hesitating between stopping the split pusher and doing Baron, which can potentially lead to an outcome in where they lose both. The last tip builds a little bit on the first four that I talk about, and that's less talk, more action. I'm not talking about typing in chat, I'm talking about pings. Communication is key. You should always do your best to let your team know any information you come across, but giving information is not enough. You yourself have to also act on that information. If the enemy support leaves lane to help their jungler invade against yours and they die, you might think to yourself, I warned them, I pinged a lot, they should have listened to me. And in some cases, that is the best course of action. Sometimes your teammates have to respect the oncoming threat and retreat, but other times that threat could have easily been neutralized if you responded in kind. You can spam ping your teammates that they're in danger all you want, but that does not stop the danger from coming. Sometimes it's inevitable and they desperately need your help. If you remember my first point about taking initiative, this is part and parcel to that. Now, I understand that there are many situations where you cannot help your team because otherwise you will die with them, such as if you're playing in a mobile squishy mage like Orianna and the enemy laner is a Talon. Obviously, it's too dangerous to follow him when he roams to attack, but trust me when I say that there are more situations where it is possible to help than where it isn't. And even if you're playing a vulnerable champion, you can still at least walk over to help. You just have to be very careful about how you path to help your team so as not to run into the enemy laner. You know what, let's just say you are in that situation where you can't help, like maybe you just recalled and were walking back from base. There's still something you can do to punish your opponent for making that decision. Don't freeze the wave if the enemy laner is roaming. Don't AFK farm in your own jungle while they're busy taking dragon. You should steal the enemy camp's topside or maybe take Rift Herald. Always remember that League of Legends rewards those who take action, not just the ones who cry wolf. Having coached several silvers and golds, I noticed how in far too many games they just sit in lane or mindlessly run around in the jungle without doing anything, while their opponent terrorizes the rest of the map. And then they bring the same excuse of how I didn't feed or lose lane, but my teammates are always running it down. Yes, because they were fighting a 4v5 all game. Pings are helpful, and they convey valuable intel on the enemy's position or to alert for possible danger. But no amount of question marks or red exclamation points will change the situation. You have to act on it in whatever way you see most effective. Okay, this video dragged a little long, I'm sorry about that, I just really get into it whenever I explain things, but I hope you were able to understand my points. If any of them confuse you, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to elaborate on them further. Anyways, I hope this video was insightful to those who needed it and entertaining to those who wanted it. I know this might be really complicated to grasp, especially for newer players, but ultimately it comes down to how well you pay attention and how fast you can make important decisions. Again, if a lot of people request it, I can make a more in-depth guide on any of these points in the future. Guys, if you like to support my work, best way you can do so is like the video, comment down below, share this video with your friends, and subscribe for future uploads. I also have a Discord server that you can join where you can ask questions and hang out with other players if that's your fancy. Lastly, if you want to, consider checking out my Patreon and becoming a patron. I do coach, and I'm planning to start it back up, so if you're interested in making a big push for Season 11, then give it a try. 
But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.